Browns and Falcons at First Energy Stadium, 1 o'clock. Mary Kay, the Browns trying to end their losing streak. The Falcons trying to continue their winning streak. Two teams going in opposite directions. And this is a big game for the Falcons. They're 4-4. Four and four. They've got to keep stacking those wins to try and make the playoffs in the NFC. Let's start with that offense because that is really the big thing with this team. Matt Ryan playing like he was a couple of years ago when he won the MVP, putting up similar numbers, and he has some weapons on the outside. He really does. I mean, you just have to mention Julio Jones, who the Browns traded away from many years ago uh, on the wide receiving core, Calvin Ridley, Mohamed Sanu. So in some ways, this team reminds me a little bit of the Chiefs in that they have a high-flying offense, the number two pass offense in the NFL, and a defense that's a little shaky. But Lots to worry about with this offense. Yeah, and then they remind you a little bit of the Bucks too, a team mm -hmm. in the same division. Uh, a lot of weapons, a lot of problems that, uh, that can be caused. And, of course, at running back, uh, no Devontae Freeman, but Tevin Coleman has played well over 600 scrimmage yards this season. And the rookie, Ido Smith, is coming off probably his best game. So they've got a couple of nice running backs as well to complement that offense. They really do. And, of course, it all starts with Matt Ryan. He's number four in the NFL with a 115 rating. Once again, another really, really good quarterback that they have to go against and then again we talked about the weapons the running backs Calvin Ridley the rookie receiver has seven touchdown catches already Julio Jones <laughs> Oddly enough, only has one, yeah. uh, but the guys around him are making up for it. Well, that one came last week, too, so so maybe Julio Jones, as well as he's played, now he's starting to find the end zone again a little bit, and that's a problem. Defensively, this is where the Browns can maybe get to the Falcons. If they're going to have a chance in this game, it's got to be a shootout. This team has not been good defensively, and it's really in part because of injuries. Keanu Neal is on IR. Deion Jones is on IR. He might be coming back, but uh, he's not eligible to play just yet, so the Browns kind of luck out there. Uh, but this defense has been shaky. It really has. Once again, there are opportunities here for Baker Mayfield and company to get it rolling a little bit. They might be able to score some points. They're 28th in yards per game, 17th against the run, 29th against the pass, 31st in third downs, 29th in the red zone, 29th in points per game. This is a chance for this offense to get back on track. Yeah, unlike the Chiefs, who could get after the quarterback at least, you know, did one or two things well on defense. There's not a lot that stands out on this defense. Tack McKinley does have five and a half sacks, so he can cause some problems for Baker Mayfield. But this might be the game where finally the Browns uh, get that offense going because they have not been able to score many points. And this is also a week in which Greg Williams has urged Baker Mayfield to cut it loose and to go out there and don't be afraid to make mistakes. And he's got a full complement of receivers. Brashard Perriman is starting to come around a little bit. You've got Duke more involved in the game plan. Richard Higgins back. All these things should take some pressure off of Jarvis Landry. All right, all that said, I'm still going to pick the Falcons to win this game 33-24 on Sunday. I'm going Falcons 30-20. All right, and we'll have full coverage of that game, of course, at cleveland.com slash browns.